Hello, I'm a placemaker. There are lots of placemakers around the world. I work with placemakers in all sorts of different cities. I work with placemakers here in Indianapolis too. Hence picking up on this Heart Indie sticker from uh, Fountain Square a few years back. Now, I would go as far to say that everybody in this room is a placemaker. But you may not know what placemaking is, or you might have heard the term before, but you're not entirely sure. It's become a bit of a buzzword of late. For me, very simply, placemaking is a set of tools, and it's an approach to putting the community right at the front and centre of changes to where they live. There's a golden thread of the arts as well that works through placemaking, but it won't be that kind of art that you see on a gallery wall necessarily. What this person here, a participant in Home Baked, an artist and community bakery in Anfield in Liverpool in the UK, has said, and he gets it absolutely right, the creative act is in the doing, it's the making. That's what makes the artist in all of us in placemaking. So when I say you're all probably placemakers, I say that because you've all probably been involved in a project in some way that's gone about making a place. So you may have been involved in painting a mural, like this one here in Indy. You could have been involved in a community garden. You could have been involved in a potluck dinner. This one's taking place uh, on a housing estate in London. You might have taken in the sun in a parklet. You might have walked the High Line. You could have borrowed from a community library. This one's in Charlottesville, Virginia, if you're passing and you fancy a read. Or you could have taken part in a pop-up event, like this incredibly popular karaoke in Berlin. What all of these placemakings have in common is a love of place. So where we live, it might be a bit scruffy around the edges, it may not function perhaps as we'd like it to do all the time, but they are loved. And this kind of placemaking work makes creators of all of us. It's the doing of the making of the place that is this creative act. Now, when I first came to Indianapolis in 2014, I was researching Big Car, and this is their tube factory base down in Garfield Park. On my second day in Indianapolis, I was asked a really tricky question, and that was, what is the magic of what we're doing? What's that magic ingredient that gets people giving up their time again and again and again and getting hands-on in the making of their places? And I had a hunch about what the answer might be, and I'm going to go some way to answer for that to you here today. But to do that, I'm first going to go back a few years. So this is where I grew up. It's a tiny town in the West Country of the UK. I grew up there in the 70s and 80s, and I grew up there with a gay dad. And in fact, my dad passed away HIV AIDS in the 90s. And that was really hard. Our lives weren't often made easy because of those things. And it's an incredibly remote place too. And to be really honest, <laughs> I ran as fast as I could to the city. And the city that I chose was Brighton. This is on the south coast of the UK, and it's where I still live now. And this is where the magic of place began to really come alive for me. So Brighton was a place where it was okay for me to have a gay dad. I could dress differently. I could like different music. I could be into the arts. I could have friends from all over the world. Because Brighton, this beautiful, diverse, and creative city, was a city that cared for me, and I began to care for it back. It's where I also began to do some of my first work, bringing arts into places. Over the years, I've gone on to use a certain amount of spectacle. I'm always putting art into places where you wouldn't expect to see it. And I often use interventions that you just see from the, the corner of your mind there. <laughs> I wanted to use that slide for years, so thank you for giving me the opportunity. <laughs> And the placemaking work I do, it takes place at the scale of, of the sidewalk, and it takes place across the whole of a city, across whole blocks, whole neighbourhoods, across the whole of a city stretch. What all of this has in common, though, and it's my primary tool as a placemaker, and that's the tool of the voice. It's the voice that articulates these ideas, and it's the voice that powers them through into action. For me, you see, really, essentially what placemaking comes down to is about getting people together in their place and it's about getting them talking to each other. When people start to tell stories of themselves and of their places, they begin to understand their places better and they begin to understand what role they can have in changing those places for the better. These conversations happen in what I call the hyperlocal. 
So these ha conversations happen in the here and now of where you are. The slide that you're seeing is a conversation that artists and residents are having on a housing estate in London, talking about its rapid, very imminent gentrification. These conversations are a form of so social horticulture. And I'm going to give you an example now of what social horticulture is and how it can go about making change. So this is Art Tunnel Smithfields in Dublin. It's closed now, unfortunately. But when it was open, it was a community art gallery and garden on a vacant strip of land in Dublin. It was on a street on the north side of the city, and it was a street that had a much maligned reputation for drug dealing and prostitution at night. Now, essentially, what the artists in the community did was co-create this space where they could come and gather. They came here to talk. This is the social horticulture bit. So when they were doing, constantly doing the weeding and planting out the garden, when they were involved in art projects in that space, they were talking about Smithfield, what it used to be like, what it was like now, the changes that they saw coming. And they talked about what they wanted Smithfield to be. Now, for some people, it was enough that they just came out and met their neighbours for the first time and, and, and talked to them and get to know them. And that is absolutely no small thing. Let's not forget that. But what others went on to do is become really politically and civically active in their, in their neighbourhood. Some people brought in a farm delivery service to the area. Others started and got involved in various different art and heritage projects in the area. Others petitioned for some things to be brought in and also protested about some of the things that were coming into the area too. I saw exactly the same kind of process happen uh, with the drawing shed on housing estates they worked in across London, and I saw exactly the same kind of process happening here in Indianapolis with Big Car. So the tools of placemaking, they're undoubtedly the paintbrushes, the hammers, the garden trowels of all of this work. And it takes place at a scale from where I'm standing now to across the whole of a city. But I think biggest of all, it's that intimate moment where you share food with your neighbours, where you take a breather from doing the gardening, or like here in Brighton with Sakalo, where whole streets will take out chairs onto their pavements and they'll talk to their neighbours and they'll talk to their passers-by. And this is where we're getting close to that magic of placemaking too. Work in this kind of project fosters something called place attachment. Very simply, when you get involved in your place, you begin to care for it, you become attached to it, and you begin to love it. And you will enact that love, sometimes, through placemaking projects. So a vacant plot of land like this, this is in Dublin again, but we see these plots absolutely all over the place, all over the world. A plot like this, with the power of the voice and with that neighbourliness in action, can be turned into a library, into a cafe, it can become a meeting place, and it can be a playground. This again is this magic of placemaking, where you as an individual join that community of others and you get involved in your place and you make changes in your place for the better. Now when we see images like this more and more often and when we may be the one in Sophia Khan's place facing down division in where we live and where so many of the issues that we're talking about now that are divisive come down to issues of place, I think more than ever we need to be talking to our neighbours, getting to know them, working with them, getting involved in our places. And this is where it comes back to you here now. We all know what it's like to live in our city. We all know the good of it and the not so good of it as well. And we all have voices. And I think now is the time to be using these voices for the good of our community. So we all have it in us to be placemakers. And this is my call to you now to get on out there and to get on doing it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.